And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is a marvel. You do not know from where he comes, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God, and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? He answered him, And he was he, sir, that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Is that guess what he was born without? 
not just vision, but that he was born without eyes. Those balls in your sockets, he didn't have them when he came out of his mother's tummy. So not only did he not see, but he didn't even have any eyeballs. So this man has been a beggar for so many years. And who starts the conversation in the gospel? Do you know? It was the disciples. And the disciples said, that man, Jesus, why was he born blind? Did he sin or did his parents sin? And what was Jesus' answer? He said, nobody sinned. Bad things happen in the world. Does God want them to happen? No. But we live in a fallen world. All Mr. Potato Heads are supposed to come with eyes. But sometimes you get a messed up box. Have you ever got a box of cereal that said it was going to have this nice toy in it and it didn't? Yeah, there's defects in life. And the way the Jews thought about it, the people that were around in the time of Christ, and Jesus himself was a Jew. But they had misinterpreted God's teachings. And they thought that if someone was born blind, especially without eyeballs in their face, that they were being punished. And what did Christ say? Christ said it wasn't that he sinned or his parents, but that the works of God may be made manifest. Do we pray for bad things to happen? No. Do we pray for disasters to strike? No. And they're not always from God. Most of the time they're not from God. But can God fix whatever's broken? Yeah. God can become the result of even the greatest disaster. He doesn't want disasters to happen, but He can work through disasters because He's bigger than disasters. He's bigger than blindness. And guess what else He's bigger than? He's bigger than death. For the past five Sundays, we've been singing and yelling, Christ is risen. And the reason we've been singing it so much and yelling it so much is so that we don't forget that Christ is risen. Because humanity had only one big enemy. It wasn't the boogeyman. It wasn't some bad guy named Thanos. Who was it? It was death. Because no matter how strong you were, how big you were, death attacked everybody. And now death still comes to us, but our Lord has conquered. Our Lord has crushed its power. So there's nothing, nothing too great for God to handle. Did the man ever talk to Jesus and say, hey Jesus, would you give me eyes? No. This is one of the only gospel accounts that we find before the man can even speak, Christ comes and heals him. He says, do you wish to see? And what does Christ tell him? He says, if you wish to see, go and wash. First thing he did was spit and made clay from the ground. Again, he's filling those eye sockets, just like Mr. Potato Head doesn't have eye sockets, but no eyes. So can you think of another time when Christ, when God, did something with his own power from the ground? Who was the first man on the earth? Adam and Eve. All right. And how did he form them? From the ground. And he blew light in them. And so what this is supposed to remind us when we read this gospel is, hey, just as God created Adam a long time ago, he can make eyes. He can make eyes. And he did the same thing. He took earth, gave a little bit from his mouth, and filled those eye sockets and said, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Christ sent him to a place called sin. And what did the man do? He obeyed. He didn't say, wait a second, what's in my eye sockets? He didn't say, what are you doing to me? He merely 
obey. Alright? And because he obeyed, what do we have? Not Father James, but the priest's pockets, we find some eyes. Alright? And all of a sudden, the man could see. Alright? This is cute, Mr. Potato Head. But imagine having never, ever, ever known what the sun looks like. You hear your mother's voice, but you have no idea what a human looks like. You don't even know what yourself looks like. If someone says tree, you don't know what a tree is. This man had never seen the light of day before. And all of a sudden, God heals him. Now, that was a pretty long gospel we had today. All right? But you know what's kind of sad about it? Not about the gospel, but about the story. If you think about the gospel being this long, this much was about Jesus healing. What should the rest have been about? If something awesome happens, what do you do afterwards? If you have a soccer team, and you're like the underdogs, and you win the championship, what do you do afterwards? You celebrate. So the game may last an hour, but the party's going to probably last two hours. Because you have to have pizza and trophies and ice cream. So this part of the gospel should have been what? Celebrating. It should have been celebrating the joy of the Lord that this man born blind, without even eyeballs, now can see. His parents should have had a party. The priest should have had a party that somebody was healed. But instead, this whole chunk of the gospel is arguing about how it was done. Because it wasn't done according to the way those people wanted it done. Someone named Jesus Christ, who was the Son of God, that they didn't believe in, was messing with their ways. And instead of rejoicing in the fact that a man born blind can now see, they said, let's tear down Jesus. And the man who had seen nothing for over 40 years becomes an evangelist. The sad thing about today's gospel is those who had eyes became blind. And the one who had no eyes can now see. It's scary, my brothers and sisters in Christ, because the eyes are grace. Once you start with grace, you must now become obedient to the commands of God. Who didn't begin with grace? All of us begin with grace. We all fall, and Christ picks us back up and gives us His grace. And this man, once he got his eyes, began preaching the Word of God. But those who had had grace from a long time ago who had the Torah, who had all the teachings, they lost that grace and became blind. So what we have to learn today, little children, is that you've been given grace. You're inside of the church today. You will open your mouth and receive the body and blood of Christ. That's grace. But guess what? You're expected to do something with it. You're expected to love your siblings. You're expected to be obedient to your parents. It's work. It's not always easy. And sometimes the world will be against you. But just like this blind man, you have to stand firm. It, it, I was almost laughing when I was reading the gospel. Because he's, he's like, don't you all get it? You're supposed to be the teachers. You're supposed to be the ones pointing other people to this man. And you're trying to tell me he's a sinner? No way. He opened my eyes. <coughs> and I'm going to tell everyone about him, whether you want me to or not. We have to have that zeal. Because maybe we weren't born blind, but all of us have received grace. And once we receive grace, God expects us to do something with it. Okay? If, if your parents give you $20, that's a lot of money. And if you go and spend it all on candy, they're probably going to be disappointed. Because that's all 
only for you. But if you say, Mom, I bought a little bit of candy. I bought a little bit of stuff for Dad. I bought something for my siblings. And I even gave some to the church and to the poor, to people that don't have. They're going to say, well done. They're going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And that's the words of this man. Because he saw, he couldn't see, Christ opened his eyes with clay. The same clay that he created Adam and Eve with. Exactly. Exactly. And he became obedient and he became an evangelist. He preached the word of God. And God expects you all to do the same. Don't be stubborn. Don't be like those Jews who couldn't have their hearts softened by the word and by the presence and by the miracles of Christ. Our Lord is risen, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And we will meet that risen Lord on the day of judgment when all things will be revealed. There's no blindness on the day of judgment. May we walk like this man who received his sight and boldly, boldly through our thoughts, through our actions and our deeds, preach the word of God. To him be glory forever and ever. Christ is risen. He is risen.